Good morning. I'm the Reverend Vicki McGrath. I'm the rector at All Saints Episcopal Church in Millington, New Jersey. Today is Sunday. It is May 24th. It is the seventh Sunday of Easter, the Sunday between Ascension Day and Pentecost. And our service this morning is the service of morning prayer. And uh, we're glad that you are here with us this morning. We recognize that there was a bit of a, a glitch that the, um, the bulletin didn't get sent out yesterday as we thought it had, but hopefully you all got it this morning. And it is now also posted on the website if you need that. that uh, the website is www.allsaintsmillington.org and you can find the bulletin there if you would like to. Um, a couple of people are still gathering, and we're glad to see all of you. Um, this, of course, also is Memorial Day weekend, as um, we are in this odd COVID-19 time. It may not even seem like Memorial Day weekend, and yet it is. And so in our prayers today, there will be uh, reference. We will be praying for those who have given their lives in, in service to our country. So we are gathered here today, and we will begin with a prelude, an organ prelude that Allison has so um, kindly provided for us. It is um, Jesus Christus Unser Heiland by Dietrich Buxtehude. Uh, that's the, the German translates into English as Jesus Christ, our Savior, who turned God's wrath away from us. Here now is the prelude.
That was Jesus Christus Unser Heiland by Dietrich Buxtehude. The opening sentences begin on page 77 of the Book of Common Prayer, if you are using that, or of course the first page of your service leaflet. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation, and so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him. Let us be in silence, and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess, confess that, that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to, to the, the Father, and, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Let us say together the Christ our Passover um, on page 2 of your service leaflet, or page 83 of the prayer book. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has also come the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 68, verses 1 through 10 and 33 through 36. Verses 1 through 10 and 33 through 36, beginning on page 679 in the prayer book or on the bottom of page 2 in your service leaflet. Please respond with the words in bold, the alternate verses from what I will be reading. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. Let them vanish like smoke when the wind drives it away. As the wax melts at the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Exalt him who rides upon the heavens. Yahweh is his name. 
rejoice before him. Father of orphans, defender of widows, God in his holy habitation. God gives the solitary a home and brings forth prisoners into freedom, but the rebels shall live in dry places. O God, when you went before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth shook and the skies poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent a gracious rain, O God, upon your inheritance. You refreshed the land when it was weary. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O God, you have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. He rides in the heavens, the ancient heavens. He sends forth his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God. His majesty is over Israel. His strength is in the skies. How wonderful is God in his holy places, the God of Israel giving strength and power to his people. Blessed be God. Glory to the Father, Father and, and to the, the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts, chapter 1. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood before them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is nearer Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say now the canticle, the Song of Zechariah, on page 92 of the prayer book, also in your service leaflet. Blessed be the Lord. The God of Israel, he has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins, in, in the tender, tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 17. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, 
so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you have given me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you who, who gave who you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they believed you sent me. I'm asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name, that you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together the canticle to Deum, found in your service leaflet and also on page 95 of the prayer book. You are God, we, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the Eternal Father, all creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white army, robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, Advocate and Guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death. You opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill the hearts of your faithful people with the power of your word. Amen. I don't know about you, but in these last few days, things for me have felt very strangely disjointed. Although, I guess, in truth, for the last ten weeks it's felt that way. But these last few days have been particularly that way. Um, maybe that's because the warmer weather has arrived and we all want to be out and about in all the ways we used to be. Um, maybe because this is Memorial Day weekend and all of the parades and the, the parties and all of the festivities we would normally have had uh, will not happen in any um, significant kind of way. Maybe this has seemed disjointed because the various rest various restrictions have been kind of lifted in stages in different places in some states more than here in New Jersey, but even here in New Jersey, things are being lifted bit by bit, and yet life is still not back to normal, to what normal was uh, prior to 10 weeks ago. So it has seemed and felt like a very disjointed time these last few days. 
And in the church calendar, we are in a kind of between time, a strangely disjointed time. We are in the time between the Feast of the Annunciation and the Feast of Pentecost, that 10-day period between the time that Jesus returned to the Father in heaven and the giving of the Holy Spirit. And as we heard in the book of Acts this morning, Jesus bid his disciples farewell on the Mount of Olives. If those of you who uh, were part of the, or, or worshiped with the Ascension Day video, you'll know that it uh, was a little bit different. The story is told a little bit differently. What we heard in Ascension Day was Matthew, and what we're hearing today is the book of Acts. So, you know, everybody's got a little different take on the details, but um, the essence is the same. So Jesus had bid his disciples farewell on the Mount of Olives, and then they returned to Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey, about three quarters of a mile. They returned to Jerusalem, and they gathered in the upper room where they were staying. We can only assume that maybe that was the upper room that Jesus had, um, had rented for the Last Supper, but we don't know that. So they gathered in this upper room, the disciples with uh, the women disciples as well, especially Mary, Jesus' mother, and, and his brothers, his brother James and the other brothers. They gathered together with each other. And the way that Luke tells this story in the book of Acts, the disciples ask Jesus while they're gathered on the Mount of Olives, they say to him, is this the time you will restore the kingdom to Israel? They're asking, is it now at long last that we're going to get rid of the Romans and, the occup and their occupying army and that we're all going to be able to live fully into God's purpose and plan and we'll just get to be who we are and who we want to be in the way that we think God wants us to be. Will everything finally be good and okay? Is this the time? I'm sure they were asking that with eagerness and longing and um, real hope. And they might have been a little uncomfortable with Jesus' answer to them. He says, you are not to know God's timing. That, that's up to God. You don't get to know that. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will receive that power in order to be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Samaria and to all the world. So in your own place, in the halls of power, because that's what Jerusalem was, the center of religious and governmental and in those days military power as well. And in Samaria, the place where those, um, uh, those distant cousins who seemed so other that they couldn't even eat with them. Uh, yes, you'll even be sent to them across those boundaries, and to all the world, to all the, all the Gentiles who were beyond the pale as far as faithful Jews were concerned. That's the power that's God, that God is going to be giving, given to you. The power of the Holy Spirit. Now, the disciples are still not to know the timing of when this next step is. Jesus doesn't say. He just says, this will be given to you. You're going to have to wait. Now, that might sound in some ways like us because we know we've reached certain thresholds. You know, the threshold for the disciples was Jesus' return to heaven. We know we've reached certain thresholds, um, but we don't know what's next. Unfortunately, our thresholds are ones that are very painful and difficult. Um, as of this morning, there were more than 11,000 people in New Jersey who have died. 30% of all the people in our state who've been infected with COVID-19. And if any of you had a, a glance at the front page of the New York Times this morning, you will see that there were the names and very brief descriptions of a thousand people in the United States who have died of this virus, and that is one tenth of all the people who have died. A hundred thousand people living in the United States 
of the more than one and a half million who've been infected with this virus. Those are all milestones that we would never have wanted to get to, and they are very unsettling, particularly when we remember and think about the fact that uh, there have been little to no funerals for those families, for those people who have died. Those are milestones that nobody ever wanted to, um, to come into uh, contact with. So we're in this very unsettled place. And in the book of Acts, Jesus tells the disciples to wait for the power from the Holy Spirit in order to be his witnesses. So the disciples go back to their room where they were staying and they spend their time in prayer. We don't hear that they're making plans particularly, but we, they're spending their time in prayer to prepare for whatever was next, something that they could not even imagine. And also, I'm sure they were reflecting on what they had experienced and learned with their three years with Jesus and the, the 40 days that they had had with him after the resurrection. And they needed that time to be able to reflect and prepare for the very new thing that was to come with the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. They didn't know what that was going to be, but they certainly needed to have their hearts and minds and spirits ready to be able to go wherever the Holy Spirit was going to be sending them. And I think that we're in a time when we need to think and reflect and pray about what these 10 weeks have been like. Our Bishop Carly Hughes has been asking us, urging us all to think about in these past two and a half months, um, some specific things about our church and our faith to reflect on those things. She's asked us, what have we missed in this time? And what have we grieved over? What are those things that have been really lacking and have been so hard for us? She's also asked us to think about what has been the gift or the learning in this time. It might seem like a strange question, but but it's one worth asking, what has been the gift or what has been the learning of this time? And then what do we hope for going forward? Now, I've already had a chance to talk with some, some of our folks here at All Saints, and um, their answers have been, have been very heartfelt. Um, people have really missed coming together seeing one another, the physical, the physicality, particularly for people who have, who live alone, the physicality of a handshake or a hug or, or touch. Uh, people have really missed music as much as we've been trying to offer it here. People have missed the music. They've missed being able to sing. Of course, people have missed communion. They've just missed seeing the inside of the building. Um, all of those things are things that we have missed and that we have grieved, and we know that. Um, it's important to not gloss over those things, to just not take those things for granted, but to really deeply feel those and, and let ourselves grieve a little bit. But in terms of a gift or a learning from this time, some people said they realized how much they've gotten to know their family better, and they've really appreciated that. Some people have learned that um, the fact that we've been able to offer Compline every night has been a really good and life-giving thing, and that's something we want to keep on doing, keep taking with us. I know we've, I've learned that we can do live streaming our services, which I didn't think we could do before. And we know how important that has been for so many people and how much that will continue uh, even when we can physically be in person and back in the building. Uh, we want to be able to offer this going forward. We've also learned that we've been able to be church and to be the body of Christ and to follow Jesus and do so many things without actually being physically present to one another. And I don't think we would have known that beforehand. We know that we are a church 
without walls that also has buildings. That's, that's been a real learning. And what do we hope for? Of course, we hope, of course we hope that we can physically be back together. We hope that we can sing together. We hope that we'll be able to receive communion together. But we also hope that we can be stronger and deeper Christians going forward. We hope that we can learn to listen to what God is saying to us, to what the Holy Spirit um, wants us to do in, in ways that we wouldn't have thought possible before. It doesn't mean we know what they are, but we can hope that we will be those people, the people that God needs us and longs for us to be. And we hope and know indeed that whatever is next for us, whatever is next for our country, whatever is next for ourselves and our families and our church, that even though things will be different, at least for quite a while, we know that we will be able to use our creativity and our resourcefulness and our resilience as we continue to be the church, to be the body of Christ in the world. So like those disciples between the Ascension and Pentecost, between Jesus' return to heaven and the giving of the Holy Spirit, we need to use this time to reflect and to pray, and to be open and willing to embrace whatever it is that God has next, knowing and trusting that God will be in it, that God is with us, and God is for us as we continue to be God's people in the world. Let us pray. Gracious God, we ask for you to give us your peace of heart and peace of mind, as we wait and pray and listen and reflect so that we may truly receive the power of your Holy Spirit to be your witnesses, your ambassadors, your people in your world. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed found on page 96 of the prayer book as well as in your service leaflet. I believe in God, the, the Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He, he suffered, suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was crucified, died, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, 
but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us, and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Judge of the nations, we remember before you with grateful hearts the men and women of our country who in the day of decision ventured much for the liberties we now enjoy. Grant that we may not rest until all the people of this land share the benefits of true freedom and gladly accept its disciplines. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you now to share your intercessions and thanksgivings, your prayer requests by typing them into the comments box, and we will um, include those as part of our prayers, our prayers together this day. So we begin those prayers with the parish cycle of prayer for the day. Today we remember and pray for Sister Deborah Francis, for Barbara and Tim Erde, for Molly Fairber, for Lori and Randy Galky and Graham, and for Janet Gibbs. And in our parish prayer list, we remember and pray for Charlotte Davis, Nikki, Brooke, Joyce Culzer, Cecilia, Michael, Anne B. Titus, Suzanne Traub, Edward Roller, Phyllis Wallace, Grace Ward, Scott Horway, Anne, Dave, Ashley, the COVID Palliative Care Unit at Mount Kemble Hospital, Patricia L. Reardon, George, Donna Donnelly, those sick at the VA Hospital in Lyons, Terry and her family, Jean Goldsworthy, Christy Young, Bill Ward, Jerry, Wesley, Rodell, and Linda's dialysis team, the Christian community, the community of St. John Baptist, Robin Flood, Patrick Corcoran, Terry Darling, Zoe Ray. And in particular today, we remember all those who have died. We remember Veronica Jurassic, who died yesterday. We remember all of those who have died of COVID-19 in our country and around the world. And we remember with gratitude all those who have given their lives in service of our country. We pray for Mary Flood, who fell and broke her pelvis, and we pray for wisdom and guidance for her doctors who do not want to do surgery. We pray for Charlie as he recuperates from surgery. Susan prays for her cat Duval, who was ill and going to the emergency vet today. She also has hurt her back and is asking for prayers to get back to normal. Linda prays for Lisa and Jeremy and baby Jade. Lord, we pray for all of these concerns those spoken and those unspoken. We continue to pray for all of our medical personnel, all essential workers, all those who 
do so much for the rest of us. We ask that you would keep them safe. We pray for all of our leaders in this time that they may make good and wise decisions on our behalf. And we ask for your wisdom and guidance for us as well as we go about our lives. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We pray as well for Rick Oles, who's having surgery on Friday, for Matthew Cantor, who gave his life for our country and for his family, and for Bob's sister-in-law, who is having back surgery. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And now let us say together the general thanksgiving on page 101 of the Book of Common Prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have, you have given, given us grace at this time with one accord to make, make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thank you everyone for being here today. As the day progresses, we will have our uh, coffee hour via Zoom. So um, please take a couple of minutes and go get your coffee and we'll gather at 11 o'clock. If you would like to be a part of that and you do not have the Zoom link, please email us at allstsmill at hotmail.com and we will get that to you. Um, also, the Narnia Book Club is meeting today at 4 p.m. Uh, we're discussing chapters 5 and 6 of The Voyage of the Dawn Treader of the Chronicles of Narnia, and we'd love to have you join us for that. Again, if you don't have that uh, Zoom link, uh, use the same email and we will send that to you. Um, Allison's just put it in the chat box below. Thank you, Allison. And... Um, this evening we will gather again at 9.30 for the service of Compline. We hope to see many of you there. And um, thank you for being here today. I hope you have a, a beautiful day and a blessed Memorial Day weekend. Thank you and God bless you. <music>